Yesterday we celebrated Mother's Days. Mom, thank you. What a job you guys have. You're nurturers, coaches, cheerleaders, Uber drivers, arbiters, psychologists, therapists, educators, ER doctors, bankers, theologians, and mind readers on top of all that. Thank you again. In our series, our new series, Fixer to Fabulous, we're talking about renovating relationships. No relationships are perfect, which means all of our relationships can improve. All of us have some things that can make good relationships great or repair rundown relationships. Today, let me just say this, parenting is hard. I know you're going, uh, duh. And by the way, you never stop being a parent, no matter how old your kids are. So two things that we need, that's wisdom and understanding. So remember this today, God gives us wisdom when we seek it and ask him for it. And we get understanding from other parents. So we want to connect vertically and horizontally as well to be a great parent. And remember, mom, dad, grandparents, you have influence. This is your time. In fact, the Bible has a lot to say to parents about how to influence your children. And do you know what the Bible says to the church on how to influence children? Nothing. God intends parents to be the major influencer in a child's life. Now, as a church, we want to help and we want to come alongside. No doubt about that. But here's the scripture for this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 5 through 7. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. And then he says, repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you are on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. Your influence is key. Your habits, your attitudes, the things your kids see you do. Do they see you reading your Bible and praying every day? Do they see you look to God and seek His wisdom when challenges inevitably arise? Do they hear encouraging words? Do they hear affirmations? Do they understand the importance of church because you make it a priority in your life and their lives? Often, let's admit it, we all fall short. Oftentimes, it's because of our parents. What we learned, we just simply pass on. But at our worship services last weekend, we were reminded that we don't have to continue to pass down the iniquities of our parents to our children. We don't have to continue the bad behavior or the poor examples, but through the power of God, we can be the change for our children and generations to come. Maybe you wanna write this down and declare it, maybe on a daily basis to keep track of it, right? Here's what we're saying. That you will say, and I'll say, I'll be the end of all the iniquity that's passed, been passed down from our family line. Let's be the beginning of the blessing of righteousness and steadfast love for a thousand generations to come. Maybe this is the day. This is the day will forever change the way that you lead your family. And then the verse that John writes will ring true for you. It's in 3 John 1.4. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Amen? Have a great week.